Hi everyone, making an art journal page today and I already got some acrylic paint here. My page is prepared with gesso. I am it's in a sketch notebook and I've prepared the page with gesso because I want my paints to mix and slide and not absorb into the page uh, quickly. And I've already got here some uh, dark purple, Persian blue, some bright, uh, <laughs> uh, let's see, bright blue and some burgundy. And I've got here a little bit of gesso. Maybe I will uh, also add it to the mix. We'll see. And what I want to do is just have fun and with my fingers just play with the colors. I don't have any uh, planning except for uh, having the darker colors towards the edges and as I said, really not planned. I just want them all over random and well, play with the, just to play with the colors. I am a, I do want a, each color to have a place on my page and I want them a little bit to mix not uh, really concerned about blending perfectly just having color on my page i really like uh, this uh, smudged uh, look i'm getting when i'm using only my finger so I, I thought about using a baby wipe, but then I would have a complete blending and I'm not looking now for a, for blending, just this smudge look. And also a, it, that it will show movement. much on my finger so I've wiped it a little bit and completely playing with what I have And where I think it's not dark enough, I'm going to just add to the mix. And I'm also going over uh, some of the colors and they mix together and create more interest. So quite a mess right now that will... Uh, Hopefully, we'll come together when we continue building layers. Yeah. So I'm just adding where I think it needs a little bit more and... Yeah. Okay, I really like it. I'm going to uh, just let it dry and then we'll continue. I'm back. So this is dry. I only added a little bit more paint in several places that I've, I thought that the white is showing off uh, from uh, the bottom. So, but this is it. And I have some light grayish blue here uh, 
acrylic paint that I want to start stenciling with on my page, add interest to my background. I've got this mandala a stencil and I want to start stenciling it in my background and to add details and interest I'm using a makeup sponge now I'm hoping it will add interest without overwhelming the page because I still want to work on it try to concentrate most of the paint uh, to the middle of the stencil and when I'm going towards the outside of the mandala I'm going to try and make it look like it's fading away when I don't have a lot of paint on my sponge don't know if it will work but I'm going to try. <laughs> and I'm also uh, not pressing as strongly as I've done in the middle of the mandala. Again, so I will have a little bit of fading effect like this. So in the middle I'm taking a little bit more paint on my uh, makeup sponge and I'm pressing harder especially that this particular acrylic paint is not runny it's more pasty and now when I'm moving outside I'm not putting pressure and I have very little paint on my sponge yeah and I still want more details so let's see maybe some circles I really like some circles or let's go wild and do some maybe lettering I have this stencil and again it, with the same color part of it will get covered with my focal point but right now I'm just building the layers of my background yeah it really doesn't matter uh, for the background if I've used here this lettering or numbers or any abstract uh, shape. It just to add to the whole and add interest in the background. So use whatever stencil you've got. And just a little bit more here. Yeah. That's it. So, now uh, I'm going to return to this uh, mandala stencil. And now I want to do... To do... Uh, here uh, to stencil it here with gesso and I am trying going to try and do so it will look like a dream catcher 
So first of all, I'll take some gesso. Let's see. Maybe I'll we'll just put it like this. And I don't need the whole circle. Just trying to put it in the middle of my page and I'm laying down some gesso here so it will be easier and let's take another sponge because here I really want white I don't want some blended color I want it stark white against my very dark background I'll probably have to go over it once more if I want it to really uh, be white. So at least two coats of the stencil. Just adding more, as I said, like a second coat where I think it needs more white. Yes, I really like it. Okay, <laughs> so uh, now I'm going to let this dry and I'm going to find a... Um, Painty paper or something. I want some feathers uh, to cut feathers from some painty paper. I'm going to find something interesting, and when this is uh, dry, I'll come back. I'm back. So I went looking for painty papers to make my feathers, and while I was looking, I remembered I had this. Uh, folders that I all, uh, always taking feathers out of them I only bought the, they were from the cheap store I bought them only for uh, for this purpose but I, I figured uh, let's show you some uh, something uh, how to make your own feathers if you don't have something like that so again from the cheap store I had invitations uh, for birthday parties and they were with horrible pink that you can hardly see it right now. And I've braided all over it with some uh, metallic uh, paint and acrylic paint. And that what that's the painty papers I have. Now, if you want to do feathers uh, and you are uh, starting by doing some sh uh, leaf shape. And it can be something like that or like that there are all kinds of shapes of feathers and that's the beginning of the shape well you when you have this uh, shape you take a little bit out of it like so randomly and it can be like this also i hope you can see what i'm doing like so and if you need to uh, see better I'm going to go over the shape like this almost like a leaf It's better if it's not symmetrical, then it looks more uh, 
natural like this and of course now you get to fussy cut it and where did I put my scissors I'm using nail scissors it's easier to use the curve of the scissors to my advantage and I'm going to do it quite quickly it really doesn't matter So now I'm flipping them and again using the curve to take out these little pieces. Now if you, uh, you can leave it like this and go over with the permanent marker and do some, you can go over the edges like so. You can do this. So there will be more definition to your feather. You can also draw more lines and leave it as is. Or you can take again the scissors and start cutting in like so to the stem of the feather and make it look more real up to you so that's one way to make it if you have a stencil of feathers you can of course put it on any painting paper trace it and cut it I have this stencil but the feathers are just too big for for my page so I'm not using it but again you can use whatever you have trace it the general shape and then cut it so that's my advice about <laughs> doing feathers uh, for this project I'm going to use the one that I've cut from the file folders and I'm going to take a Posca pen, white Posca pen and try and do I have a new one and I'm really hoping it will work I, ha I don't have luck with Posca pens let's see now I need for it to start working <laughs> okay it seems like it's starting to <laughs> let's see not yet but at least I can I really don't have luck with Posca pens. Even when they start working, I, it seems like I damage them. So quickly. Okay, let's find something else. Let's see. I've got this. This one is again an acrylic pen. This is by Zig. Good enough. So I'm going to uh, glue my feathers down to my page. And I still feel like I need something more here. Maybe it could be just some words. Maybe more details in the background. Not sure. I 
want to place my feathers first and we'll see now the feathers I I didn't really fussy cut them I left white because I figured it will just go nicely with my um, mandala white here and I didn't see the need to be very accurate with the cutting well I really like it but I still feel it needs something more I'll be back I'm back so decided that I wanted some circles in the background but not again not overwhelm my page this is my focal point and I don't want it to fade away I'm going to put some white acrylic paint here like so and I'm spreading it and I have this I've a uh, found these circles in the hardware aisle in the chip store and I just glued them to a piece of foam of craft foam and I just want to randomly <laughs> I also stamped my uh, table like this just a little bit more here and oops I can do this again to make sure I have paint here yeah this is it I really like it like it and now for uh, some words I took dream big and I want to place it on my page some glue here and basically this is my page yeah let's see where do I want it yeah, to the side here yeah so it, again it won't take a uh, the focus from this page so this page is uh, complete, I have finished with it. I want to show you but what I've done, I had on each step of building this page, I had leftover paint and I didn't want it to go to waste. So what I've done is I've taken one of my journals, the ones, this one is in a book and I just smeared the paint took another stencil and used the gesso I, will, I had left and stencil and now that I have this left over I'm thinking let's go with the theme of the circles and just add and I already got an interesting background here I'm always trying to use the leftovers for something else and especially if I'm using some uh, cut out paper I prefer to glue it in one of my uh, journals junk journals instead of uh, adding it to one of my stashes so here it is now this background is uh, almost done I think I will add some uh, pre, uh, <laughs> stamps stamp with uh, some lettering and maybe butterflies in here I'm not sure but I all as I said I have a, an already made background to work with so this is it for today 
almost two pages and i hope you liked it and thank you for watching and thank you for leaving me comments below i'll be seeing you in my next video bye for now